All right, with our creature scape, we've been working to place it, finding out where we want to place it, and then last video, integrating the feet into the ground. You can see with the paws there, how it helps to bury them in a little bit of that sludge and water. I can also go back to that layer, which is just a little copy layer of the water itself, right? Kind of mapped over. And if I feel it needs a little bit more distinction, I can always use clone stamp. And this time, I'm going to say current layer only. So if I clone stamp from only the current layer, I'll do it at a slightly higher uh, opacity. It's going to be a lot more subtle because what it's doing is just clone stamping from the water texture itself and can kind of blend it. That's the layer I want. There we go. So kind of wrap it around the foot, get a little bit of that bluish shading even onto the bottom of the creature. It's all going to help. So before I do uh, direct lighting adjustments to the creature, we've already posed it. I need to just cut out these trees. I'm going to have auto select turned on for my move tool so I can just click on them and immediately get there. And I'm just going to go right to my eraser. Oh, I have it locked, that's why. I'm going to unlock it. So I can just cleanly erase the edge of this foreground tree. I'm using my pressure sensitive tablet. And because trees are organic, it's pretty easy to just create an edge for it. And it's only where it overlaps the creature that I need to clean it up. You can do this in several passes. Each time you make a pass, it will remember it in your history. Because we are editing pixels in real time, it's easy to mess up. So I always like to have the history open. That looks pretty good. Now this tree. What's going on with this? Let's see. This one, I didn't quite cut out enough of it in some parts. So what I might need to do is go back to my background or my middle ground and do some of that clone stamping right on it. There we go. That's the layer it's going to show up on. So now I use clone stamp. I keep it on the current layer. I'm going to keep it at a higher opacity here and I'm just going to bite away from this edge of the tree and change it. Actually I can copy that edge of the tree and move it down like so. You don't want it to be too copy pasty. You kind of work in different places. Then we can build it up. There might be layers you can get rid of, or we can just blend away from. Taking out lower opacities, that kind of helps with the lighting. Okay, now 
if we want to smooth that transition, we can always do more of this internal clone stamping, working on those layers only. And we can always erase away as well with our soft edged eraser at a low opacity. Okay, now we've got those trees nicely cut out and layered on top. Good time to save it. Good time to figure out your overall composition. So I was playing around with the guide here using my move tool and just dragging from the rulers at the side. I think I want to push that out maybe to here. And I'm going to crop it. This is going to be my new composition. Why am I cropping it? It's so my creature is more of a focal point. I want my creature to take up around a quarter or more of the overall image. And so sometimes that means I need to crop some of the landscape. And this will come into play when we identify its pixel dimensions using image size at the end and figuring what is it still good for, for doing. So mine is now still more than eight by 10 inches at more than 300 pixels per inch. So it's still a very strong print resolution which is nice and you can see it how clean the pixel detail is okay so now let's clean this up a little bit i've saved it i want to see if there's any layers i can get rid of that aren't being useful right now i don't need this one i'm not placing the creature there i am placing the creature there I've got my pose, so I can even get rid of my smart object. And now every other layer is being used. First and foremost, they are putting the trees in front of my creature and then putting the paw, sinking it into the ground. This is after puppet warping and all of that. Then I might just, let's see, erase away a little bit from the paw where that, that one spider web is. Just like that, really faint, really simple. Okay, so anything you can do to kind of get it to integrate. Now, we know where our creature is. We're gonna start affecting it directly with dodge and burn. And before we do that, we can play with just levels. So before I do any of that, I'm gonna make a duplicate. This is my posed creature. And I'm gonna turn off the one I have indicated with red. That's my original kind of creature pose that I've decided on. And now I go up to image adjustments and I start with levels. For some of you, this will make a huge difference. For some of you, it will be very subtle. For me, it's going to be kind of in between. So do I want the midtones to go brighter in this environment or to go darker? And I think just subtly darker. So 1.00 is direct middle for midtones. So I'm going to make it a little bit darker by pulling it to the right, just the midtones. Then I might decide if I want to limit my highlights or not. That's going to put it more in shadow. It's also going to make it less dramatic. So I'm just going to limit the highlights a tiny bit. And then I can decide if I want to limit my shadows a little bit. Maybe just a tiny, the tiniest bit. And now I can see by turning that layer that I duplicated off and on, does that make a difference? Does that help? And I think, yes, it does. So let's move on. That's levels. Next, image adjustments. Go to color balance. My creature was lit in a very warm way. This environment's more blue and green, so I can add a little bit of cyan. If I do too much, it's going to look weird, right? Like it was drinking irradiated water. But if I do just a little bit and kind of push its tones a little bit more towards the greens and the blues, it's going to start to match. I don't want it to match so well that it camouflages. 
but I want it to feel like it's lit by the same type of environment, right? As the middle ground, because my creature is in the middle ground, not the background. And then I tend to overdo this, so I'm going to downplay it a little bit. I can play with the highlights and add some warmth back to the highlights if I want. And you just figure out the lighting like we have in other projects, how to make it work best. And then you can see, is that better or worse than what you started with? I think those direct adjustments for color balance and for levels are helping so far. And then the last one, image adjustments, hue saturation. This you might not need at all, but it is helpful. If there's some color that's just really standing out, you can try moving the sliders for hue back and forth and just see if you need to push it just a little bit one way or the other off of zero. I think I'm going to push mine just a little bit redder. And then in terms of the saturation, whether you might want to deaden your saturation a little bit to fit the environment. If you do it too much, you just get to grayscale. You don't want to lose color content. So I'm just going to deaden it a tiny bit. And then again, we see based on the original. So you can see how just those direct adjustments can help with the coloring and the lighting. Now I'm going to duplicate that, turn off the layers behind, and now I'm going to use tool adjustments. So dodge, burn, and sponge. First, I'm going to put in highlights. So using dodge, I'm going to use a large soft brush but at an exposure of less than 30. And I'm going to look at how this foreground is lit, how lighting is kind of hitting the top edges of things. And I'm going to directly do that to my character. So this is what's called destructive editing. It means I'm changing the pixels directly as I work on them. And that's why I did it as a duplicate. So you can see what that dodge tool does. It starts painting the back of my creature with light, helping it match the lighting condition of the environment, which is one of your requirements for this proving ground. It's easy to overdo it, which is why I always put it on a separate layer. His face is catching plenty of light, so I didn't dodge a lot of his face. <laughs> okay, next I will use burn just on the creature. And I'm going to go to the midtones and the same kind of thing a large soft brush, 0% hardness at lower than 30. I'm going to do something closer to 20. And now you, under, you see the shadows, the cast shadows, the form shadows underneath. So that says to me, in the midtones, I can darken what's underneath this creature. Only on the creature, though. Remember, this isn't the environment yet. We're going to get to there. But in this way, your lighting condition can be as dramatic as your setting on your creature. Instead of going for just the kind of flat, even lighting that we usually have with concept work. So does that help? That's the direct dodging and burning. Now, if you overdid it, and I maybe overdid my shadows a little bit, I can just take the opacity down on that, and it will show the creature copy I have underneath, and I can decide how much of it is helpful. I can even try different blending modes and say, okay, I only want the things that lighten it, or I only want the things that darken it. And you can see what all these different options do. A lot of them are going to compound the effects and are going to be too strong. But pin light is often a good one. But in this case, it doesn't do much. <laughs> Ooh, luminosity is nice. And that's dealing just with lighting. And does luminosity actually make it look any different than normal? No. <laughs> so if I like how it looks normal with just dodging and burning, then I'm good.
but I can t I've taken its opacity 